Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Tim and this is Tim the Trailman and today I've got a dual battery install set up with ICS Fab's brand new tray and wiring kit. It's going to go over by the passenger fender. ICS Fab sent me this kit, the tray, the wire from the main battery to the dual battery and the fuses and everything I would need to install it. They did not send me the Red Arc charger and they did not send me the Odyssey Group 34 battery. Thank you ICS Fab for trusting me on this install and making this video to document how to do it. So let's first see what's in the kit and then we'll go over to the 4Runner and show you how to install it. Okay, working our way down from the top of the box. These are the tie down rods that go from the bottom of the tray to the top of the tray for the ICS Fab bracket. This is the ground cable for the secondary battery. So this is gonna go from the battery to the chassis ground on the fender side. We've got a heavy gauge wire to go from the starter battery to the Red Arc battery charger. We've got this nice laser etched ICS Fab tie down for the dual battery. If you decide to go with the Red Arc battery charger, this is the mounting tray that sits on top of the ICS Fab hold down. And this is where the Red Arc charger will sit. Inside both of these boxes are the ICS upgraded battery terminals. They're upgraded because they're a better conductor. I believe they're made of aluminum. They also have extra mounting points for auxiliary things such as winches, lights, coolers, things like that. So you can tie down to those on both batteries. So I've got one for the starter battery, one set for the dual battery. This is a fuse kit for the main battery and the auxiliary battery. So the wire from the main battery to the dual battery is going to have be a fused wire. And then from the dual battery to the red arc charger will also be fused. You never want to run wires on electrical systems that aren't fused in case they get hit, nicked, cut, whatever, and then uh, burn down your vehicle. Always fuse your wires. Okay, so this is the pride and joy. This is the ICS battery tray itself. The way that it's going to work is it sits behind the airbox on the passenger side. This part will bolt up to the fender. There's already threaded holes from Toyota. There's also a nut on top of the wheel well that this will hold itself down. And then I'll show you how the rods and everything work but this is a heavy duty tray it looks super simple to install it is set up for a group 34 battery so that's what i purchased and then once it's installed we'll hook up the red arc charger and then run accessories and everything like that so let's head on over to the forerunner now okay so we're over at the forerunner i need to do a couple of things i don't know if all forerunners come with this mine's a 2020 so this needs to be relocated because the wall of the ics fab is going to go into that hole and that hole and then get held down by that nut so that's how easy it will be to install and then how I'm gonna relocate this is this plastic trim right here or a holder for the main harness. You can actually see this piece right here comes up to here. So I'm gonna unclip that and then this is gonna give me slack to tuck it down and I'm gonna zip tie it around there, take that nut loose and then set the tray in. So let me go ahead and do that off camera because this uh, I pulled on it and it's actually kind of difficult. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I was wrong in the previous clip. It's not this hole and this hole. It's actually this hole and this hole I've taken that nut loose. The tray will sit on top of that and we we're test fitting it. This ground goes right here um, on the fender, but the tray seemed a little wobbly. I don't know if that's necessarily supposed to be the case, but what I'm going to do is take that bolt out and then I'm going to run it up and the battery is going to be grounded to the chassis either here by the air box right there. Let me focus right there, or I'm going to run it up to this ground right there. Um, you can see, let me focus right there. So either way, this ground will have a place to go. So let me get that tray installed and I'll show you what it looks like. And then we'll put the battery in, hook this up. Be right back. Okay, so now that we've got the wiring set up and the zip ties and everything, um, we are gonna need to put the rods in the tray system because the nuts are on the bottom. And what we need to do is run one nut up, all this is provided in the kit as you saw, uh, run one nut up about an inch, and then it's gonna go through here. There are four nuts that are regular nuts, and then there's two nuts that are locking nuts. I'm gonna put that on the bottom in case it vibrates. And then the way to tighten it is start that up there. And then I put two nuts up here to jam it. And just hold this. They're 14s, and then I can tighten that down. I'm gonna run it just till a thread or two is stuck out, like that, and then run that nut down to lock that in place. So now that stud is there. I'm gonna transfer this to the other stud and put it in, be right back. Okay, so we got the tray installed. That bolt's in there, that bolt's in there. On a quick side note, 
that's not a locking nut. The one is on the bottom is a locking nut. And I had to move this right here locking nut to the top when it was on the bottom. This nut is just a hair taller than that one. So I'm not exactly sure where to put them, but as an experiment, this one's on top because the height of it is not allowing those bolts to line up. So put non-locking nuts on the bottom and then to me, it doesn't matter if they're locking nuts up here or not, they're easily accessible and I can check on them from time to time. So I'm gonna drop the battery in there and then we're gonna wire up the red arc. I'll be right back. Okay, so right before we put the battery in, this ground cable was the one that was underneath the tray, kind of right around this area. So you can see it goes to the harness. So we went ahead and just used the stud from the Forerunner and put a spare nut on there. If you can get this to fit under the tray, go for it. I couldn't, but that's what I did with that ground cable for the length. And then maybe put a little bit of protection around the studs. Uh, so it didn't rub. Okay, so I've got the Odyssey battery in. Remember, a group 34 is as big as you can. I would check in to see if you can get a 34F. Um, the one at ICS they showed me, their positive terminal is up here and their negative is up here. So I believe that's a 34F where the battery can be rotated and then keep the battery positive over here. I wanted to keep it away from the fender. So here I've got the ground cable provided by ICS tightened down to the terminal. That's tight down. And then I went ahead and ran it all the way up here next to the secondary air pump. Like I was thinking, the cable that they provided, I didn't want to lose any length of it and put it by that air box. So the next thing I'm gonna do is set the tray up here, put the red arc up there and wire that up. And the last thing we'll do is hook up the battery positive. Okay, so depending on how you set up the device for the red arc charger, there's different charging profiles and I'll show you that on paper here in a second. But right now, the green one I'm not gonna need, the blue wire I'm not gonna need, and the yellow one right here is for solar, so I'm not gonna need that right now. What I do need though is I hooked up the black wire and the orange wire. The orange wire dictates the type of charging profile, and I'll show you that in a second. So heat shrink and this eyelet terminal will come over to the ground, but let me show you really quick. ICS, they provide eyelets for the cable, for the ground cable, and for the positive cable that will run from the starter battery over here to the dual battery setup over there. And with the Red Arc charger, they provide barrel connectors. So for that wire, one would be an eyelet from ICS. The other one would be a barrel to connect to this red wire right here, right there. So the thing that I didn't know existed was I've always been crimping wires like this with, you know, eight or 10 gauge, 12, this, that, but they make a hydraulic one. And so I borrowed this from a friend to be able to crimp these down, which makes it a lot easier for that heavy duty. So definitely recommend it. I'm not trying it with this. If you do, let me know in the comments if you can crimp this heavy duty connector with this. I'd buy this on Amazon. It doesn't cost a lot. Okay, so the Red Arc is powered up and wired up. I'll show you that in a second. So here's the charging profile. The orange wire for A, not connected, B, connected to ground, C, connected to power, or if you have a LifePo. So A, B, C, or LifePo, will show up which way you have it right here, A, B, C, or LifePo. The difference is if it's A, it's 14.6 volts max. If it's B, it's 15 volts. So I did that because it's an AGM battery. C would be over 15.3 volts. I don't think that's necessary. And for LifePo, which I don't have. So that's what those mean and how you wire them up. Here, let me show you how the blue wire works really quick. The standard trigger versus the low voltage, the main difference is gonna be if it's not connected, the red arc is going to be charging if your starter battery is above 13.2 volts and below 12.7 volts. If you connect it with vehicle ignition, then it's only gonna charge if it's above 12 volts and it sees that a vehicle ignition is on and it's going to quit charging if it drops below 11.9 volts. So even though I have a relatively variable alternator, you would think that I would go with low voltage the downside is though, I have a wall charger at the house that I keep it connected to. So without the ignition being on, I don't think it's going to work. I did already test it. If the battery, starter battery, is above 13.2 volts, then that's gonna stay charging whether the ignition's on or not. So therefore I only have to connect one set of charging leads at the house and my alternator relatively puts out over 13.2 volts all the time, so I don't need to worry about it not charging the second battery. So that's how the blue wire works. So this is the wiring schematic provided by Red Arc. The typical setup for 12 volts solar panel if you have it, 
starter battery, your second battery, your ground, and the Red Arc charger. So go ahead and pause the video if you'd like to study that and set yours up. The book comes with the Red Arc charger. Okay, so a quick overview. This power wire here goes over and around, and that is going to power up the Red Arc. Then I have it fused from the Red Arc into the battery. So that's the second fuse piece from ICS. The ground, the earth cable, down to the secondary air pump, next down to the fender is grounded. So hold down, battery, ground, power. Overall, I'm super excited of how this came out. And this is how it looks in the engine bay. Starter battery, dual battery. Okay, that wraps up the installation of ICS Fab's dual battery setup. Thank you again to ICS Fab for providing the dual tray setup and the wiring kit. I'm super excited about how it came out. From start to finish without filming or taking a lunch, you can have it done in an hour. And I find that as a win if you're doing a mod and you can have it done in less than an hour. If you'd like to see more content like this, then please hit that thumbs up button, that subscribe button, and thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.